Hello, welcome to my How to Use Sketchbook Quick Tip series. This is a series where I will show you quick and easy tips that will help you on your journey learning Sketchbook. If you would like a longer, more comprehensive and in-depth look at these same tips, you can follow the link above, which is a longer video of these very same tips. Otherwise, if you don't have a lot of time, these quick tips are for you. Thanks for watching and enjoy! So maybe you've decided against using Autodesk Sketchbook as a viable tool for creating your illustration projects because you don't like the variety of brushes. Maybe you feel like, well, you can't download brushes like you can in other programs. You know, it only comes with a certain number of brushes in its library. Or you're on the other side of this and you think, oh my gosh, look at all these choices. Look at all these settings. I have no idea what to do. This is way too complicated. And you end up just always using the very basic brushes and you don't quite get what you want out of them, so you give up. This quick tip is going to be about changing your brush settings to get exactly what you want out of them. Also, I found, you know, I'm one of those that I want all the colors in the crayon box. I want the big crayon box. I have choices. I love choices. I love having everything available to me, whether it's paint colors, all the crayons, all the colored pencils. I want all of it. I, I want to just be able to grab it and do it. And at first I was a little bit disappointed when I first started using Sketchbook going, well, I guess it is free, but you get these brushes and I'll work with them. And then I found out that as I started playing with the settings, I realized, you know, this isn't really that bad. And the limitation of not being able to just go somewhere and download some really cool brush has forced me to be more creative in how I use these brushes. Now, if you want to use them more as a stamp for, say, leaves or something like that, you do have limits there. Just changing the settings for the spacing, for instance, that's a very easy way to change the look of the brush. But I have still been able to find some things I can use. So this quick tip will be all about how to change your brush settings to try new things and how they allow you to be more creative with your textures and your patterns. So here we go. Now one thing that might be a reason you don't want to use Sketchbook might be the limited amount of brushes you have and the fact that you cannot download new brushes like you can in Procreate and other iPad art programs. But except for a few instances, I have not really run into a problem Maybe because I have my favorites, so I tend to use them over and over. Um, but the brushes that it comes with are really quite customizable. And you do get several. You also get different shapes, textures, patterns. And then within each brush, I'm going to pick one that I don't mind changing. This is the default right here. It's just, you know, a simple airbrush with, and I have the flow all the way up. But let's say you wanted kind of that fuzzy flow look, but you wanted more texture added. So you go into the settings and the brush types, you know, they usually are standard, but then within there you have different looks. So you could, you know, the marker has a different look from the standard. 
the standard tends to be a little darker. And then you know, there's, they blend together really nice. If you're doing a, a different brush, standard, like this watercolor one, the standard tends to be a little flatter and you'll get a little bit of a line when you overlap them. So you get kind of right in here, you see how you can really see your brush strokes, which is a little more digital computer drawing looking than paint looking. You can also change it to smudge. Which in this case reminds me a bit like finger painting, but that's because we have the flow all the way up. I like it down further so that it just sort of, you feel like you have more control. Smudge the eraser is pretty self-explanatory, but you can, what's nice is you can jump to any one of these. Let's say you have a texture added like I do with this one. Now the standard is a bit more flat looking like I was saying. You, have a, you can kind of see the texture but not as much. Marker, it's darker even though I have the opacity and the flow down but you can see that texture even more. And then of course, if you use smudge with it, that texture is still applied. So you know, as you smudge things around, you're adding a little bit of texture to it. Now, a lot of times you may not like this you're getting this line in here again which you know depending on your style or what you want to achieve you might want that because it kind of looks like I'm bringing water into it and adding water and just bringing the flow so it kind of has a little bit of that bleed effect like you get with real watercolor so sometimes you can play around with it just to achieve a certain look but you might say not like the smudge with this brush. So then you just use a different brush for it. Uh, eraser, again, if you keep your opacity down, your flow down, it will apply some of that texture again that you already have on the brush. And it's a nice way to just kind of jump between different modes. It's so easy to jump back and forth. The synthetic paint is different in that it, and I talked about this in my other video, it's like you just add a paint to your brush and then it runs out. And again, the natural blend is the one I like the most. I use it most of the time, unless I need a much darker effect. Now the colorless one is a little bit confusing. Most of the time it kind of seems like I'm it's a smudge brush. It could be more like adding water. It does appear to be kind of like a blending brush but it's smearing the paint around a little bit more. It's like adding water. All right let's go back to this one. I'm going to clear this layer out. Now right now there aren't really any um, it's a very simple texture apply. There's no texture, it's just a shape. You know, you have your basic settings here and that's a quick way to adjust things, but I usually use these sliders instead. So in the advanced, you can change, you know, that the size is changing with your pressure and all of that. That's all pretty self-explanatory. Spacing is very interesting because if you have we go to the nib, if you have, see sometimes you can just add shape and it'll give you that, you know, more brushed look and it depends what you use. So 
right now it's just sort of I mean it's kind of an interesting texture but it just looks like it's repeating it which it exactly is so I don't know how often you might use something like that so let's change how about the spacing now the spacing here it's on 0.5 so that's why you're getting this kind of just repeating pattern here that's really close together let's turn the spacing down to one that smooths it out now it just sort of has a striped maybe you could use it for hair but let's say you want those dots to show up more you can turn the spacing up and then and now you can do this with any of these shapes now maybe this looks a little bit too repetitive because they're all going the same direction so you can change that the roundness will it changes the shape of the brush. See how now it's more elliptical? If I turn that back all the way to 100%, then it's round again. So that might change the look of your texture and your shape a little bit. Rotation, you can change this. Maybe you want them all going not up and down, but this direction, depending on what you're trying to create. Maybe this is a snake skin pattern or something. I mean, you could start off with something like this. And then to add some variation, take your smudge brush and just, you know, make it look a little bit more like a natural pattern, a natural animal pattern, or add something else to it. Uh, there are ones that can achieve that look even more. Now, rotation dynamics, this will have to do with how you're holding your pencil. So let's say you want to do some that are going straight up and down and some are going sideways. So depending on the direction you hold your pencil, I'm tilting it in different ways. Now I'm kind of spinning it around just to see what you get. That way you can get kind of a more varied pattern. Now the hardness, because right now we have it kind of softens on the edges. The hardness will get rid of that if you want the pattern just to be the pattern exactly as it is full opaqueness and everything is opaqueness a word so that's the shape and you can change the shape there's there's lots to choose from see now we still have the stroke with the spacing wider apart. But if you bring this back, I'll turn the hardness down. See, you get different looks with all of these different brushes. So it really does give you lots and lots of choices. Let's bring this maybe right in there. See, now this gives you, you know, maybe you want some of that pattern just to show up on top so you can kind of blend it in maybe it's the edge of a rock cliff or something there are different ways to achieve that though but you know you get to play with it you get to choose the look you want and there's so many different choices See, nice kind of soft, but with just a little bit of texture. Now, if I change this from the standard, where it's kind of flat looking, to natural blend, clear this. 
this is up all the way because it is but this is a nice light wash make the brush nice and big and it blends with itself really nice you still get your brush marks a little bit but that's why I like to come back in and in areas where I don't really want that brushed look I just use my smudging brush my favorite smudging brush and blend it out so maybe you want it in some areas but you don't want it in others and just blend it out so it's really up to you and then if you add shape and texture this one's a very light it'll give you kind of a graphite effect change this back so we can see it see if that helps yeah you can see it a little bit let's try the marker one too light there now you can see that texture even more and it's only on the outside edges if we bring down the opacity some of it stands out now you can make these textures stand out even more or less you can change their scale so let's say you want it to have kind of a rough paper watercolor paper look see if you change the brightness just look at how you can see that texture kind of pop out even more you can bring up the contrast get more of a grainier effect so this is again reacting how it reacts with your pencil so if you want the depth to show up with your pressure depending on how you use your pressure and then randomness now this is where it's really good for those pattern type brushes and shapes so again I'm going to come back up here and change the spacing So this one's a more random looking one anyway, but you can start to see that it's just a repetitive pattern. So if I go down to the randomness, you can change the size random, the opacity, and the flow, and the rotation, which is important. See now, it's flipping it around. Some are darker, some are bigger, some are brighter. So there's lots of different ways to use these different brush settings. So I suggest you just play with it, spacing again. These are really good for also these, uh, these patterns or textures and these different shape brushes. See what else we have. I have some that I put up in here that I use. I do like the star one. I have it really tiny though. See I have this random randomizing quite a bit so that you can do stars. Some will be bigger, some will be smaller, some will be brighter. I'll make it bigger just so you can see it. And then if you turn that soft glow on your layer, they will appear to be like bright stars against a dark background. Very fun, I like that one. So yeah, it's the best to just play with them and that's the best way to learn them. If you kind of know what the look you want is, just play around in here and see, see what you can create with what you have available. It's a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but it's, I like that this is so easy to use. You don't have to learn the product as much as discovering the shapes and the brushes and what you can do with them specifically. That was a how to use Autodesk sketchbook quick tip. Be sure to like and subscribe for more as I will have more to come.
Thanks for watching and stay creative.